Today we are going to discuss about serverless SQL pool versus dedicated SQL pool in Azure Synapse Analytics. This is a very important interview question and usually it is asked in different ways. For example, you might get a question like what is serverless SQL pool or what is dedicated SQL pool or like when to go for serverless SQL pool or when to go for dedicated SQL pool or even something like what are the advantages and disadvantages of serverless SQL pool and dedicated SQL pool. So in your interview, if they want to ask a question about Azure Synapse Analytics, there are 95% of chances to ask this question. So it is very important to understand the overall concept. And in this video, we will cover everything about this. So for those who is wondering about what is serverless or dedicated SQL pool, as you can see here, I'm inside the Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. So here from the data tab, if you are creating a new SQL database, you'll find two options over here. So these are called as SQL pool type. And the two options are serverless and dedicated pool. So this is what we are going to discuss in this video. So to begin with, firstly, let's understand what exactly is serverless database and dedicated database. The serverless database in Azure Synapse Analytics is a cloud-based database service where users do not need to provision or manage the underlying infrastructure such as servers, storage, or other infrastructure components. So basically what this means is, in the serverless database, we do not need to set up any infrastructure, which means that when we create an Azure Synapse Analytics, the serverless SQL database will be automatically created and will be available built-in. So we don't have to do any kinds of infrastructure setup and all these are completely managed by Azure itself. So that's why it is called a serverless database. On the other hand, the dedicated database is a cloud-based database service where users provision specific resources upfront, including compute instances, storage, and other infrastructure components. So basically, unlike serverless database, the dedicated database does not exist as a default one in Synapse Analytics. So we have to create it if required. So because of this, the infrastructure is completely maintained by us, such as to configure the amount of compute that we needed and other infrastructure components. Say for example, if you're going to do a set of operations, you can create a dedicated pool just specifically for that. So that's why it is called as a dedicated database. So this is the basic definition of serverless database and dedicated database. Now let's discuss about the advantages of the serverless database. Firstly, the main advantage of serverless database is less cost. The reason for this is, one beautiful thing about the serverless database is, you have to pay only if you use it. If you're not using it, then you don't have to pay for it. So basically, the cost is charged based on the number of queries that you use to access the serverless database. So whenever you are querying the serverless database, you're basically using the compute of it and you'll be only charged based on the amount of compute that you use. So because of this reason, the cost would be very less. Another advantage of serverless database is you get quick results. So as discussed earlier, the serverless database is a built-in one, which also means that it is always readily available for us to use it. Say for example, if you want to access any tables from the serverless SQL database, you can just write a query and access it anytime without waiting, which helps in getting quicker results. So this is also one of the main advantage of serverless database. So similar to this, when it comes to the advantages of dedicated pool, the first and the foremost advantage would be, it is very suitable for performing high workload operation. The reason for this is, the dedicated pool have the massive parallel processing engine which allows the data to properly distribute and helps in processing the data more efficiently. So for this reason, the dedicated pool can easily handle any kind of massive big data workloads. And the next advantage is that the dedicated pool is so scalable. So since we'll be setting up the infrastructure for the dedicated SQL pool by ourselves, we will have a lot of flexibility in terms of setting up the compute size that we need. So when you actually create the dedicated pool, you'll have an option to configure the compute so you can pretty much choose the compute size based on the workload that you need to process. So because of these options, say for example, in the future, 
If your data grows a lot in terms of the volume, you can simply reconfigure your dedicated pool by increasing your cluster size based on your needs. This helps in scalability, which is a great advantage of using dedicated pool. So these are the main advantages of both serverless database and the dedicated database. Okay, now let's discuss about the disadvantages. Firstly, for the serverless database, the first and the foremost disadvantage would be it is only suitable for less workload. The reason for this is, unlike dedicated database, it doesn't have the massive parallel processing engine to handle the enormous big data workloads. Also, the serverless SQL pool does not have the local storage and all the data will be stored in an external storage account. So if the storage account is accessed by many different services at the same time, it may affect the performance of the serverless SQL pool and hence it is not really suitable for doing big data workloads. The next disadvantage of the serverless database is it is not scalable. So unlike dedicated pool, we do not have any control to configure the compute based on our requirements. We do have the auto scale option available in the serverless SQL database, but it will not be well suitable every time based on our high workload needs. So if your data becomes huge in the future, and during that point in time, if you have been using the serverless database, then there is a high chance that the performance will be affected. So for these reasons, it is not really scalable, which is one of the main disadvantage of serverless database. So now let's see the disadvantage of the dedicated database. The first one would be, it is high in cost. In dedicated database, the more the performance, the more the scalability, the higher the cost. As you can clearly see here, the cost of the compute is really high. So even for a medium compute size 1000 data warehousing units, the cost of the compute for one hour is around 16.90 USD. And the cost might grow exponentially when you increase the compute, which makes it as an expensive component. Also one thing to note here is, unlike the serverless SQL database, there is no such concept like you'll be charged only when you actually use it. So what I mean by this is, as you can see here, in the dedicated pool, we have an option to pause or resume the dedicated SQL pool. So only when it is on, you can access the dedicated SQL database. Otherwise, you cannot access anything in the database. And as soon as you start the SQL pool, you'll be charged based on the selected compute. And even if you're not actually using anything like querying the database, etc., you'll be charged. So this even further makes this as an expensive component. The next disadvantage is that the dedicated SQL pool gives lower results. So this lower results is not in terms of the performance, but related to how quickly we can access the database and get results from it. So unlike serverless database, the dedicated database is not readily available. So unless and until you turn on the dedicated pool, you cannot access the tables within the dedicated database. So if you want to query the tables, the first important step is to check if the dedicated SQL pool is on or not. So if it is not on, you may need to turn on the SQL pool, which will take at least three to five minutes for it to turn on. So due to these reasons, there is a possibility of delay to get results when you have to quickly access the dedicated database. So this is one of the main disadvantage of the dedicated database. Cool. So we have seen about what is serverless database and the dedicated database, along with its advantages and the disadvantages. And now, most importantly, in the interview, they might ask you an interview question like, when to go for what? So basically, they would expect you to explain the different scenarios that is well suited in choosing either serverless or dedicated database. So let's see how we can answer this better. So firstly, you can go for serverless database if you have an unpredictable workloads in your project. So what this means is, for example, Consider you're working on a project which requires you to submit a month-end report. So for this scenario, there is a high chance that you'll be accessing the database a lot during the month-end time. And after the end of the month, the frequency in accessing the database might become less. So here, the workloads will not be predictable one and depends on the requirements and the business needs, the frequency for accessing the database 
might be changing every time. So in this scenario, the best option is to go for serverless database. On the other hand, if you have your predictable workloads, you can go for dedicated database. For example, consider you are working on a project where you have a set of ETL pipelines that runs every day exactly at 10 a.m. in the morning to load the big chunk of massive big data to the database. So here, we know that the frequency is fixed and therefore it is a predictable one. So in this scenario, we can go with the dedicated pool. Also one common example is, consider you have a pipeline that takes regular backup of your entire data from the database every month. So for these kinds of regular activities, it is better to go with the dedicated pool considering the predictable and the massive workloads. And the other scenario where we can go for serverless database is, consider if you want to have a database which is mainly used for ad hoc queries, then you can go for serverless database. So what this means is, as discussed before, the serverless database is built in within Synapse Analytics and it is always available for us to use it. So whenever we want to query the serverless database, we can do it anytime without any issues, which makes it really suitable for ad hoc scenarios. On the other hand, if you're looking for building a massive enterprise modern data warehousing system in Azure Cloud, then the best option is to go for the dedicated SQL pool. So the dedicated SQL pool is previously called as SQL Data Warehouse, which is extremely well suited for building a data warehousing system, considering the wide range of computing options available, massive parallel processing engine, and other distribution optimization, which makes it a great choice for building a data warehousing system. And finally, to end this up, if the cost is the key, then the best option is to go for the serverless SQL database. And whereas if the performance is the key, then the best option is to go for the dedicated SQL database. So this is the best way to answer in your interview if you are asked when to go for serverless SQL database or when to go for dedicated SQL database. I think now you have a clear understanding of the serverless SQL pool and the dedicated SQL pool. So as said before, it is very important interview question. So I hope all the things that are discussed in this video is well understood by you. Cool, so if you have faced any challenging question in your recent interview, please let me know in the comments. I'll make a video about this if the question is really interesting. So that's it for today. Please like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers, bye.